Hi, everyone. Hello, what's up? Hey, Vincent, how you doing, buddy? You're on mute, Vince. Jeez, tough start. Amateur move. <laughs> I was so rookie. <laughs> Got both Robs here. The Robs. Gonna be good. What's up, Vince? Are you coming down to see us next week? Yeah, yeah, I'll be there a week from today. Awesome. Excited. I'm excited for uh, future you. Yeah, excited to have you. Where are you guys based? Uh, we're in Jacksonville, Florida. Oh, okay, nice. We're having a big event next Friday, um, and Vincent's coming down for it, so we're excited to have he him. He was telling me about it, yes. Very cool. All right, everyone. Well, we are waiting for Claire to join us. I'm sure she's going to hop on in a moment, um, but that's all right. We can get started and kind of wait for her to roll in. I know there's more people joining us as we speak, um, but we can just kind of go ahead and get started. So I wanna welcome everyone to Broker Connect. My name's Kelly Galloway. I'm really glad everyone could join us today. Uh, for those who don't know, this session, Broker Connect, it's an interactive bi-weekly meeting with top brokers and Rive users. You can learn best practices, get insight into how other brokers are using the system, and just get a ton of tips and useful information. So we're glad you're here. I'm here today with Robert Lynn and soon, hopefully, Claire Mahoney. Um, super excited to have these folks here. But before I turn it over to introduce, um, I wanted to, and before I open up the floor to any questions, I just have a few pieces of business to take care of. So for those who don't know, we just have an absolutely full schedule every single week of learning opportunities. These are all completely free. We have two sessions of new user training every Wednesday. We have office hours with our product experts on Tuesdays and Thursdays. We have a brand new onboarding and Q&A session. This is offered three times per week. You don't have to be an Arrive user to join this one. Arrive University is every other Friday, so that will be next week, and this is where you can learn all about the updates and enhancements to the system. And then, of course, we have this session, Broker Connect, and this is every other Friday. All right, I'm done rambling. Now we can get into the good stuff. Robert, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Hello, thanks for having us. Nice to meet yeah. you. Yeah, good to have you. So I'm just going to kick it over to you. Do you want to introduce yourself, give us a little bit of background on yourself and your company? Sure. Uh, my name is Robert Lynn. Um, started Future Home Loans about five, a little over five, five and a half years ago. Um, we're up to about 115 employees now uh, on board. We got 75-ish LOs. Uh, we got a full marketing team. The lender concierge team and ops team with um, about 11 processors, um, two closers. You got my head of operations is on the call with us right there, uh, Rob Maloney. In case you have any technical stuff, he's actually in the system grinding and out more than me anymore these days. Cool. Um, but yeah, we so we moved over. We do 150 to 200 loans a month. And um, we moved our entire shop over to arrive about six months ago. And uh you know, thanks to Vincent being uh, an amazing um, asset for us. It was amazingly, amazingly smooth. Very nice. And for anyone who doesn't know, we have a couple of team members from Arrive on here. Aside from myself, we've got Vince O'Brien, we've got Tara. These folks are super knowledgeable on just the ins and outs of the system. They are experts. So if we have any questions for them, these guys are here to uh, to help us out. So we appreciate them being here. But obviously, Robert, appreciate you and your team being here. This is awesome to have you. Um, all right. So I'm just going to kick it off with a couple of questions here, and then we can kind of open it up to everyone on the call. But Robert, can you discuss a little bit um, how you discovered Arrive and maybe why you decided to try it and ultimately use it for your business? Sure. Well, uh, obviously, we started our broker shop a little over five years ago, and um, about four years ago, um, you know, Arrive came as the next biggest thing since sliced bread, make your you know, make your sandwiches for you. 
um, everything. And, and we were excited to, to check out a ride back then. And, you know, the, it just wasn't, it wasn't a functional system as far as we could use it, demo it. Um, you know, we had kind of grown using Blink, uh, believe it or not. We had, we had come up over, over the years using Blink as our primary, um, LOS really for us, you know, I, I wasn't gonna let my team use uh, Calyx. So we were kind of waiting on something to take the place um, and not, you know, not invest in Calyx at all. We had a couple of licenses in case we had to do anything, you know, from a company standpoint, but, you know, we just, we just kind of grew and grew and, and Blink was managing our needs. Okay. And we were kind of waiting and we'd check out, I'd do a demo with Arrive every six months to a year. And it just wasn't working for us. And, um, a little over a year ago, we tried to do a Salesforce implementation, um, which after significant investment and about nine months of, of growing out our Salesforce platform, we had more questions than we had answers. And um, you know, we made a tough decision to kind of reevaluate everything um, on the standpoint of, you know, like it was, we, we had a lot invested in the Salesforce migration, but it just wasn't working. So we went back and re-demoed Arrive again and were shocked that, you know, since Harish and, and, and y'all's team took over the night and day transformation, it, it went from something that was not really that attractive or usable for us to all of a sudden something that seemed extremely usable, user-friendly and ama uh, amazing product. So we made the tough decision to scrap all of our time, blood, sweat, and tears in Salesforce and, and moved over to arrive roughly six months ago. Great. Well, for, for we the love... short, for the short version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we appreciate you being here. We appreciate you, you know, taking the time to answer these questions. I know there are folks on this call today who have questions about that transition. So I'm sure they would love to pick your brain. So I think this is a great time to let everyone know. You can feel free to unmute yourselves, ask questions. Um, this is your time. This is certainly not my time. This is for everyone on this call to get their questions answered. So if you have a question, just unmute yourself, jump in, join the conversation. If you're a little bit weary, uh, feel free to chat me and I can ask the question. And then oh, I think I think we've got Claire. Claire is here. Claire's in the building. Claire is in the building. And you're on mute, Claire, just so you know, but you can feel free to unmute yourself. Sorry, technical difficulties. No worries. It happens. Uh, thank you for joining us, Claire. We appreciate you being here. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, sure. So Robert just went through his introduction and gave us a little bit of background on his company and, you know, why he, um, how he got started with Arrive and, and why he decided to use it. We would love to hear, you know, a little bit of your background and a little bit about your company um, and how you got started with Arrive. Okay, well, my name's Claire and I'm in Oregon. Um, I'm a second generation mortgage broker. Um, my dad has been in the business 35 or 40 years. Um, I've been in it nine. Um, and we, um, we have 12 people um, in our company. So we're pretty small. Um, we always used um, Calyx in the past um, for a long, long time. Um, and then I've been on Arrive like about a year and a half now. Um, and yeah, it's been a game changer. Oh, you're on mute, Kelly. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> we're happy to have you. I was just telling these folks that I know there are people on this call who are super interested in talking about how to transition um, and how to do that in the smoothest way possible. So I'm hoping people start to unmute themselves and ask a question, but we did actually have our first question come through the chat. Um, this person says, I'm a new LO working for a broker. Uh, I'm looking for best practices to promote the abilities we have with Arrive as our POS. So if I don't know how free the call was, it's my first time joining. So Oh, well, welcome. Um, and I believe there's someone named Tara on the call who uh, did a demo for my branch manager, <clears throat> um, Jamie Murray, within the last couple of days. I'm just giving a, an overview of you know, the co-branded link uh, for the realtors and, you know, the capabilities that the realtors will have uh, through that co-branded, um, you know, atmosphere. So 
we have an event coming up that we're looking to utilize the capabilities of Arrive to um, to promote and you know why it's best to do business with us with the realtors that we meet you know at our upcoming networking events. So anything that you can suggest to um, you know for us to do or provide or market um, you know at a networking event utilizing Arrive's brand and the point of sale system you know, would be helpful to get from a call like today. And yeah, for, from my perspective, you know, speaking to a, the, somebody newer in the channel, I think that it almost goes hand in hand with the sales pitch of why, why choose a broker. Um, you know, it gives you all this availability to price out multiple lenders at your fingertips. It gives you, you know, you can, you can hammer the fact that you are shopping for your customer. You are going to provide that customer that best, best experience, that best price point. You know, all the things that everything that goes hand in hand with being a true broker, you know, really does for you is is kind of a selling feature for me with Arrive. And you know, Claire could probably talk a little bit better about the real estate portal than I do. I don't get in there a whole lot anymore, but I know that's a nice added touch that a lot of these retail shops are really pushing out that now I've seen come. This is, you know, kind of come to fruition here over the over the course of the year. <laughs> yeah, for, for someone like myself, that co-branded portal um, is a little bit of a it's helpful from the standpoint of, you know what, if they have, if they're willing to work with me and they have a buyer that's ready to fill out the 1003, but just maybe not everything, they don't have the docs yet or what have you, it at least just gets that, you know, that application started in arrive. And now it's a warm lead for me to follow up with. So it definitely takes some of all the, the noise that you could have from the time you meet somebody to the time that you actually submit application and it could just eliminate a lot of that, you know, wasted space and wasted time um, to get to the application and start developing that relationship. Yeah, and as you grow and, and build out a team, and you've got you've got your realtor partners in there that can use it. You've got a sales assistant that can get in there. Your op, your processing team can all get in there, and everybody can work very effectively and efficiently together. You know, that's one of the things that our top producer, you know, our top producing fellows, really like about it is. You know, it's really functional for a for a system of everybody working together. You've got a lot of availability. You've got a lot of visibility. So, you know, kind of when you're talking about your assets and, and the things that, that, that you provide, you know, that's a good selling feature to some of these new partners is you know, my whole team's on this. We've got great visibility. Another thing, too, if you're at a networking event, uh, a huge value add with Arrive now is both the POS and the LOS is completely mobile friendly. So you don't want to have to necessarily lug your computer out and show people. Once you start showing other LOs and other professionals and, and customers that everything from taking the app to processing the loan can be done, you know, while you're sitting at the beach, like anywhere you are, you, you have full access to your business. Um, I think that's a great value add. And that's something that's easy to show off. Uh, you know, when I was originating before I was on the Arrive team, I had my phone contact. I had the link to the application saved. So if I shared my contact with a realtor or a borrower, you know, the, in my contact was an, a link to apply. A link so to I think the, apply, the whole right? mobile friendly part of it is a huge value add that, that people can immediately see. Now, there's not an app, correct? It's just using the link on a mobile. There's browser. not an app, but it's completely friendly with mobile browsers now. Okay. All right. And same for the iPad, obviously. Yeah, you'll just set up the little thing on your screen and hit the button and it feels like an app. It looks like an app. Yep. <laughs> just kind of what everybody calls an app now. That's fine. Yeah, for sure. Well, I, I think a huge benefit too is just like the speed. Um, I mean, like running just a quote for a client um, compared to how, how, how much time it took when I had was on Calyx. I'm like, I mean... The, how much more efficient I can be is just amazing. And the fact that I can do a side-by-side -side and like crank it out really quickly and do side-by-side -side FHA, side-by-side -side conventional, give them four scenarios in like a matter of a couple of minutes where that would have taken me a half an hour um, on Calyx before. So, um, I mean, that's that's a huge benefit too, where even, even if you have to hop on your laptop really fast, like it doesn't take very long to just um, crank something out that looks really impressive. like. I love the way the quotes look um, and clients and realtors like it too. Really easy to read, pretty, not intimidating, not like the ugly fee worksheets in <laughs> Calyx. <laughs>
Uh, hey guys, um, my name is Teresa Timms. I'm a little late to the call. I was wondering if I could hop in and ask a few questions. Please. I have to meet an attorney at like 1040, so good times. Uh, so I have been originating since 98 and used uh, Calyx the entire time and have been trying to get away from it since Arrive first came out. And I hopped in and out of Arrive, then went to Lending Pad, and now I'm at Arrive. I'm all in. I love it. Um, we really started training on it the last month, like, and especially the last three weeks, intensely me, not just my um, my assistant. So what I'm, like, I feel good about the features, but the integration, so for example, I'm training on it and I've spent a lot of time. And when I download the 3.4 file and send it to my processor, or, you know, she has access through um, through my point, the, the the information is not complete when it goes into point and and then i also have other loan officers and for like my call reporting i'm struggling with okay so we started we thought okay from june we'll we'll upload all of the files from june and start fresh and arrive but then i started thinking okay well then what do i do about the first half of the year for the end of the year call report and then, then we're like, okay, well, then we'll download all of the arrive files into point because we're eight months in and then finish out the year through through there. But when we download the file, there's so many fields that are missing that we have to refill out and point. And so because a lot of you have gone through this before, I was wondering if um, like, what are some tips that you can give me or what are some work? And then I was gonna be like, okay, my loan officers, you have to start, we're transitioning to arrive. There's going to be no more point. So you have to start learning it and blah, blah, blah. So that's my, that's where I'm at. Um, so how I transition sounds a lot like kind of how you're doing it. Um, I, I, I'm the broker owner and I'm, I'm always the guinea pig on any sort of new process or technology that we try. Cause I know that you know, I, I want to know the frustrations before people come complaining to me about well, how does this work or why does it do this or whatever. So I did just my pipeline for a month um, on Arrive. We were on Calyx before. And um, then the next month, um, I was like, okay, everybody's leaping in, like we're diving into the deep end. So you've got a month of trying it out and testing it out and whatever. And here's these trainings you know, I have this set, this set up and you can come and talk to me, whatever. Like I had a whole month of them doing as much learning on their own as they were interested in. And then it was like, but this is the due date of you're in, whether you like it or not. Um, and, um, and yeah, I mean, the, the call report was annoying the first time because it was like blending two reports, but it's kind of just one of those things where it was worth the hassle because it all just became so much more efficient once we were all on arrive um, and everything has been clean once it's a full quarter for the call report, you know, all in one platform, obviously. Um, and yeah, I, I think I do remember some of the, you know, importing from arrive into Calyx didn't quite bring everything over. So I just print the 1003 and hand it to my processors to fill in the blanks, which, you know, if you kind of are on a crutch a little bit while you're like, Oh, that's a good idea. That's a really good idea. So I can download the PDF that's completed yeah. Yeah. in Arrive and then send, then then give it to her and be like, okay, if there's anything missing, it's all right yeah. here. Oh, that's yeah. a really good idea. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, so then you I mean, would suggest I mean, maybe, not perfect, but yeah. So then if I did it my way where I'm like, and you know, truthfully, um, since June, we don't have an extraordinary amount of files to transfer over. Right. So, uh, I, and maybe I could even go back a few more months, but I thought if I did it clean in the middle of the year and then um, then started out, so, okay. I mean, yeah, it'd certainly be ideal to start a quarter like that where it, it would all be in one system. Um, mm -hmm. I, I did it where I, I tried it out in April and then moved my company over in May. So it, it was oh, a no. long quarter, yes. but, um, but, at that time, Calyx was like freaking horrible. Like when the new, you know, 3.4 transition, yeah, yeah, was like, I, I don't even care. Like I'm going to jump off a cliff if I don't change. So, yeah. um, you know, it is what it is. Like you, the faster you rip the bandaid off, the smoother it goes. So you just okay. got to go for it. 
Yeah, and we and we've never used Calyx, so I'm not going to pretend like I can understand that pain point. Um, but like Claire said, uh, rip the bandaid off. Um, you know, if you if the transition is going to be a little bit, but you know, we kind of phased out a transition, and we were just ahead of schedule on every on every every aspect of it. We even we accidentally flipped all of our apps over. Um, way early for all of our LOs without really actually rolling it out or telling them because we just marketing changed changed the links on us um and a little bit of a miscommunication and we were waiting for all hell to break loose and we didn't get one complaint and got then it. when we got in all we got was raves and 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 excitement and happy and so so stoked about it. So you know I think you can you can come up with a lot of excuses and a lot of reasons to kind of drag out a transition but like if you just jump in with both feet i think that's the best we had a we had a huge success doing it accidentally okay well and i have a lot of um like veteran los that have been in business a long time and they have their way of doing it and i don't really like learning new processes or technology and honestly the system is so intuitive like and they were so frustrated with all the problems that calyx was having it was kind of like, I can't even trust Calyx anymore. Like the mm -hmm. last few months, I was having to literally calculate things by hand because I yes. couldn't trust it. And I'm just like, that well, this is no kind of life. Right. <laughs> this is not the life yeah. that I want to live. So, okay. Yeah. So, I mean, even, even that, like, yes, change is hard, but like they, they are so much happier on it. And like the transition really wasn't as painful as I thought it might be because um, I was like, man, this is a big change, like to change from a platform we've been on for 25 years. Um, but it's very intuitive. Um, I mean, it looks a lot like UWM system, which isn't, was, you know, I'd say UWM system's harder than Horizon. Well, I was thinking too, that as a company owner and setting up all of the things, not just being a loan officer, I'm probably experiencing more of a learning curve than what an average loan officer would. So maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The well, and I feel like a lot learning. of the system settings yep. stick better um, than it did in Calyx. Like I running AUS was such a pain in the butt on Calyx, where now it is like I hardly ever get errors, and so that saves so much time. Yeah. I'm sorry, I interrupted you, Robert. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say the loan officer learning cover was basically zero. I mean, it was we were all shocked at how fast it, it, the transition was when we just got it out of the way. Okay. My my ops manager Rob Maloney was like thinking that I was going to give him a pay cut over there because like everything <laughs> was so smooth. He was worried. <laughs> but uh, Vincent had did a lot. Of, uh, let me give a shout out to Vincent on that. He walked us through. We did trainings. We had an awesome rollout, and you know, really you utilize your your arrived teammate. They're uh, they're amazingly helpful. Well, and they really listen to feedback that you have. Like when I, when I was so frustrated with Calyx, I was, I researched lending pad and arrive. And I, like I said, I was the guinea pig. I, I paid for both platforms and I'm like, I'm going to test this one. I'm going to test this one. I'm going to decide. And I said in one of the broker groups that I'm in, okay, you know, I think lending pad is going to be a better fit. And Harish, like he literally sent me a phone call invite at 6 a.m. Pacific time. And he's on the East coast, uh, a phone call thing for like in three hours, I want to talk to you and I want to know why lending, like why you're choosing lending pad and what I can do to change to get you not to go with lending pad. And I'm like, what the, I'm like a nobody in Oregon. Why are you calling me about this? Why do you care? But he's like, okay, well, I want to know why you're choosing lending pad over me. So I explained, I'm like, some of my lenders are like old school and like local where we generate our own disclosures. I have to have a way to do that. And he's like, okay, so what do you need? What forms? And he had me send a sample package and he's like, I'm going to have this live in three weeks. Will you go with Arrive if that's what I can do? And I'm like, I mean, oh yeah, okay. And he did it. And like, he takes my phone calls and listens to, you know, feedback and makes changes and you can send emails or, or make tickets or whatever to request changes and they like actually act on them quickly, um, and which is a huge stark contrast to the customer service with Calyx where you'd sit on hold for 45 minutes and then get a doofus that does your screen share for 45 more minutes. 
or get hung up on. That was yes, my yes. Favorite. So honestly, I was just so impressed with like how much they care to cater to their client. Like, what a business model, and like they deliver. So that was huge, and that changed my mind. Got yeah, it. it is. It is really cool. You'll give some feedback, and then you'll see it roll out in the next integration, and you're like, "Oh, I did that," you know. And and yeah, it really gives some empowerment to your team to really like invest in it. To you know, there's some ownership there that is cool. Okay, thank you very much. All right, y'all, just carry on with your other conversations, and I'll just listen in. <laughs> Good luck with your attorney meeting. <laughs> yeah. Um. Well, we do have a question in the chat, but I do just want to take this time to plug our Facebook group because we were talking about customer service and this is our, our Facebook group is called Arrive Mortgage Brokers. I'll drop a link in a second um, in the chat, but this is a huge gold mine for us and for our users. We love receiving feedback and, and this is where we get it. Um, so if you have recommendations, suggestions for us, feedback, join this group. Um, ask your questions there. You can use a search feature to ask your questions. Um, other users will chime in and help answer. Of course, our team is in there as well. So feel free to join that group. Again, I will drop the link in just a second, but we do have a chat um, question. Actually, we have a couple of them that I would like to read. So uh, the first one says, we were Calix users for 20 plus years. We've been using Arrive for the last three months or so. Can I send quotes under a lead or does the prospect need to be in as a loan? Um, I think it's the cleanest way to do it in terms of like your call report and stuff to like not muddy it up. Um, just do a quote and then you say it's saved as a scenario, but then you don't start a loan that you have to then like do a notice of action taken if it doesn't end up going anywhere. Also, you can, for a lead, you can generate quotes for your leads and then it's not in your loan pipeline and you'll have like a history of those quotes you created for that lead. So you can definitely do quotes for leads. So then when that loan comes in, in the POS, it comes in as a whole new record, but you have your previous lead a record to go back to conversations and things, or can it sync or link up? So you can then convert that lead to a loan, um, or you can invite the borrower through the lead. And then if they complete an app, it will convert that lead to a loan. As long as you invite them, invite that lead to fill out an application or convert the lead yourself and then invite them once it's a loan. If they go to your link, you just give them your link. The system's not just going to assume that that same name probably goes with the lead, but as long as you make sure you invite them through that lead, uh, it'll turn that lead into a loan. Okay, got it. I didn't even know that. I just learned something. <laughs> I never use the lead function. <laughs> but that's how technology is. I'm sure that I don't use 30% of the functionality that I'm not, I'm, not I'm, not gonna be much, I'm not gonna be much help on the technical stuff but vincent's my go-to on that so <laughs> claire you would actually be surprised we have um our broker host join this every week and i swear almost every single week someone says oh i didn't even know that i learned something new so it's cool to have people who are more veterans to the system and even picking up new tips so uh, we have another question from jordan uh, this is a more technical question. So Vince, you might be stepping up here. How do you run multiple scenarios under the same client? For example, putting 5% down versus 10% down versus 20% down on a purchase. I imagine I don't need to create multiple identical files. Is there a way to toggle between scenarios within one loan? Um, I know how to run a quote for three like that. I mean, I wouldn't say you can toggle between like complete files like that. But when you're in the pricing screen, you can type in the, you know, details for the pricing engine and you can say 5% down, whatever. And then it shows pricing. And then you do the little checkbox and it like pops up at the top of like, this is what you're in your scenario. Then you go back to the pricing engine, do 10%, look at pricing, do the checkbox for that scenario. And then it pops up on the top and then there's a compare button and you can do two or three or whatever. And then if you hit compare, it generates the quote and they're all side by side in a column. 
So I do that a lot for borrowers, which is awesome because um, it's like all at a glance and they've got these pretty little circles of your payment pie chart type thing. Um, and you can do, you know, FHA next to conventional or whatever, so. Yeah, so uh, to be back off what of Claire said, when you price the scenario and you have all those rates there, there's going to be a bar at the top of your screen that lists what the scenario is, $400,000 uh, loan amount at, you know, 90% LTV. If you click on that, that top bar, it actually drops the pricing screen down again. You can make changes, hit reprice, and anything you selected from that first scenario, it hangs on to that. And then you can reprice and choose a different down payment amount, different loan program, and compare them, just like Claire said. And you can even do like 10% down on a 400,000 price or, and 10% down on a 450 and 10% down on a 500 or whatever. Like you can you know, do all sorts of different variations because I know there's some clients that want like 87 quotes. So it makes it easier. Cool. Jordan, I hope that answered your question. If not, feel free to, uh, you know, follow up. Um, all right, guys, I want to remind you, this is your time. Unmute yourselves, ask questions. Oh, we've got right, Peter, go ahead. So when it comes to the um, providing a scenario, but providing that scenario, obviously prior to a customer filling out the 1003, right? So how, how often or how many times just from some of your experience, are you providing mm -hmm. just some pricing to somebody before saying, hey, listen, let's, here's the link, fill out the 1003 and we can get your, you know, we can get your pricing scenario, you know, a little more concrete. I mean, I think that's just kind of a personal choice on how you want to run your business. Um, I know some people like never give quotes at all until they have a 1003. Um, I don't do that. I, I give people quotes, but if they really get to the point where they're like nitty gritty shopping me, then I'm like, okay, I really think for the most accurate information, I really need a 1003. Let's make something actually lockable. Um, but you know, it's kind of one of those things of, it's just a style because there's no like black and white, right answer on how you want to do it. Yeah. Um, and, how, and I know that I was also less picky when I was newer and more right. hungry for new business, you know, and so you got to do what you got to do. And then you kind of right. tweak like where you want to set your boundaries of right. how many right. quotes am I running this person before it goes anywhere. Um, so is there, is there a, outside of the obvious information we want to collect, is there a certain point where you feel like it's just not necessary to get that deep into the weeds in the advanced piece? you know, for to run the price quote, or should we just get basic information unless there's anything imperative that they need to share with us that wouldn't be disclosed on the credit? I don't know if I understand your question. Um, and the pricing scenario, right? The top yeah. portion just has like purchase price and really just getting down to the LTV. And then I could click advance and it starts to ask for like cash reserve and, you know, past history and HOAs and, and all that, you know, if I, if I just want to focus on a principal and interest type of scenario, you know what I mean? Um, is that pricing engine something to use as well? If I don't oh yeah, it. definitely. Yeah. I never ever plug in anything on cash reserves or like those details that you don't have to so have. Just, to... So just the top, right? Well, I mean, the bottom part has some stuff like I always price fee in and I like to have a good estimate on property taxes and HOI. And if I know that they're looking for a condo or something, I'll plug in something for HOA. I mean, some of those details that are imperative for the quote to be accurate, um, yeah. you know, that makes sense. But I don't put in reserves or um, I feel like there's a few other ones that I just yeah. always skip over. Okay. All right. So I could keep it to the most important information and then just I think so yeah them. okay all right thank you that's very helpful so we have another question in the chat here so someone asked how you were able to train your team on arrive was it more was it more just like you guys sitting down with them and going through it or did you you know, send them, I don't know, our YouTube channel or send them Vince's email and say, take a class. How did that go? 
So, so we started out with our ops team, you know, they're easy to get the, your arms around them. So we got our processors in and, and got a training up with them and got them kind of up to speed. And then it was just, you know, with seven, we got 75 ish loan officers. So it was really, Hey, who are early adopters? Let's get them on board. And it was kind of like, who's ready to start. And kind of, we let them roll themselves out at their own pace. And then you got the lazy ones that come at the end that only do it when you tell them they have to. Yeah, so we kind of built that out at at, at kind of at the, at our pace, and then Vincent was jumped on. He did a training with each group, and then we had our ops team. Rob was on there, and he was training out every group, and we just kind of got them checked out. And like we said, kind of through through this call, it's so intuitive that once you got once once you got them in there and got them using it, they didn't want to use anything else. So it was a real easy rollout once you ripped the mandate off. I think it really depends on kind of personalities of your people because, um, you know, some people are like, hey, yeah, I want the newest, latest and greatest stuff and I want to jump in and I want to be an early adopter. And other people are like, I don't care what it is. I don't care how great you say it is. I want to change. And I had a lot of people like that on my team. Um, so I did a and I like I said, we're way smaller. I, I only have 12 people. So we did like a a group like zoom thing that was like a general overview with someone from the RI team of kind of walking through all the features um and then I had done that test run month of my whole pipeline um and then I have two LOAs and I made sure that they knew it inside and out because I was like we're going to be the in-house experts um, most of my people don't work remotely like we're we're old school we all show up in our office and so it's a lot of side by side kind of stuff um, and so I wanted to be available to them for, you know, quick questions or walkthroughs or whatever, but I wanted everyone to at least do the basics. So everybody did the, you know, overview training. Um, and then I sent them, you know, Hey, here's this, like, um, I don't remember if it was the YouTube channel or some sort of link where there, there's all sorts of resources. If you have something specific that you need a little bit more help on, or just come and ask me, um, my processors are way more open to like learning new tech and they were excited about it. So they also were pretty quick to become experts too. Um, but I mean, we definitely have kind of half our office is like old school and new school. And so, you know, it, it was a interesting um, onboarding kind of thing, but ultimately like we all got there and, um, and everybody's way happier with it. So, you know, you kind of just have to cater it to what, these individual personalities need, I think. And yeah, we're we're a little bit opposite. We're we're very virtual. Um, you know, there's a lot of we don't have a whole lot of folks in the office. But what I what I do think is important is what Claire said is make sure you've got somebody that's the expert. You know, we've got a we've got a litter concierge team that we use. We got them trained up, so they were the ones jumping in there and, and pulling those apps and cleaning up the 1003s and the you know, the different files in the in the interim, you, you will need some support there. So definitely kind of get this core group that you that that you can trust on that really do own it. And, you know, kind of let them be the go to. Um, and, you know, we set them, hey, we're going to have every app moved over by here. And then they started working on it. And they got fired up and excited about it. And then they were telling everybody about it. And that, that helped escalate things is once we put the timeline on it we exceeded those expectations every time. And then it was like, well, hell, let's get everyone over there by the end of the month. And, and we did, we had it. And, and the more they use it, the more everybody likes it. Now I'm like, oh, thank goodness we're using this now. My, my ops leader loves it. My concierge leader loves it. The, the team over there, they all love it. Yeah, when we were onboarding, I think we laid out like a six week plan. And then on like day four, we were like, let's just, let's just get everyone else in there. <laughs> Yeah, we were because uh, we, like I said, we we started with it. We had we we're nine to ten months into a Salesforce transition that was a nightmare, and so we went in there super cautious and super concerned. I, I had to get this thing right this time, or else you know people were going to revolt on me. Um, you know, so we were very methodical, and, <laughs> and then we just ripped the mandate off, and like three weeks later, we were we were humming on all cylinders. And I also will say. Sorry. No, please go ahead. The, you know, we were on Calix for, it was something like 25 years. Um, we've kept one seat there and I plan to just 
perpetually keep that because it would take so long to like fully move everything over for 25 years worth of business. Um, and I don't care to spend that much time doing that. So, um, you know, like I, that was a big hang up um, with like my dad was like, I don't want to change because like we have 25 years worth of past clients in here. And so we've definitely moved, you know, some recent like years data in there where, um, you know, people that are relevant, like we, we want to check of like, okay, is it time to refi or whatever? You can move some over, but you don't have to move everything over and you still have access to all your files that way, but you don't have to pay for a seat for everyone in your company. So. Awesome. <clears throat> all right. Reminder for everyone who hasn't spoken yet, if there is a question you have, drop it in the chat, unmute yourself, jump in. This is your time. Can you guys, while we're kind of waiting for um, some questions question. to come in. Oh, <clears throat> Peter, yes, go. Sorry, but if you want to, if you have a point to make, go ahead and then I'll go ahead. No, this is, this is all you. So I tested the, the borrower's link um, that I would send to somebody. And, you know, there was a ton of information there. And I do believe it's, um, you know, I can customize it uh, in the 1003. But my question is, I filled out everything submitted, and now it's a loan in my pipeline. Is that going to create any requirement for disclosures to be sent out or anything like that if a customer does that? Or what do I have to worry about doing that would potentially require um, some disclosures to be sent? It always pops up with like a, a warning thing that's like, hey, this looks like you've got six points of data or whatever it is. And you check a little box of like, yes, I recognize that I've got all the data. And so then you say confirm and then it tracks the date in there that says, okay, now the three day timeline starts now. And then it'll like turn red and flag it to you. I think, I mean, I, I might be saying a little bit wrong, but like yeah. turns red of like, you know, you need to disclose by this date and it's, already this date bro like you know yeah. do your thing so it it makes it more obvious where it wouldn't just um fly yeah. under the radar and be like oh shoot i forgot about it okay um i don't know yeah. if, i don't know if it flags it before uh, you open it but i mean you get notified to open it okay and everybody should be doing a test you should make sure yeah you should make sure everybody so that's good peter you definitely want to do that see it see it from the customer's perspective but you can we had no problem with deleting those out and i'm just there's a there's a simple way to do that, and I could customize that what gets sent out. Like if I said, you know what, I don't want to ask my customers to fill out their social and date of birth right away, and I'll confirm that with them when we submit. Or is that maybe something that you wouldn't? You definitely want to get that social. That's the first close of the phone call, Peter. You got to close yeah. these customers. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Peter, to your point there, you can't necessarily pick specific questions you don't want to ask you can pick sections that you don't want to include. So you can say, we'll skip the liability section. I'm not going to ask my borrower to fill out all their debts, but you can't say, you know, like on the loan info page to like skip the, uh, I can't think of a good example right okay. now. But I understand. For example, you social, you can't just pick out one field. You could take that page that social lives on out of your application. Okay. Okay. Uh, then so you can you can turn off social specifically and also the property address. Those are like the only two examples of that that you can do. All right, I'm gonna head out, guys. It's been great <laughs> seeing it. Yeah, I would well, say I would say over off. and say a TVD address too. Yeah, mm. yeah. Keep the address TVD, but make sure you get the social. Okay. Yeah, that's what I do. Nobody's ever closed a loan without a social. No, I I know that I know that it's just you know it's just one. It's a little bit in my nature. I come from retail banking and, you know. No, no, go hard in the paint. Yeah. Anything else, Peter? No, that's because I just, you know, last thing I need is, you know, the, the president telling me I got to send out some disclosures to myself because <laughs> I put a, you know, a dummy loan on the system. No, just now you're good. You can definitely clear those out and, you yeah. know. Don't be afraid to get that social security number. Salesperson's jobs to overcome objections, not create them. All right. Um, 
Oh, someone says in the in the chat here, they have not yet seen arrive. So if you would like a demo, if you would like to see it, I know we've got a few people on this call who would be happy to uh, to set you up with that. Um, like I said in the beginning, we just have a ton of opportunities. So if you would if you would like to see something specific, we have new user training on Wednesdays. We have office hours again, if you want to see something specific, if you have specific questions, we have office hours on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, head over to our website, arrive.com slash events, um, and you can find all of that there. Or reach out. And if you haven't, and Ryan, if you haven't seen it since it first came out, it's completely different. It's, I'd say it's 100% different since Harish took it over. What was that? couple of years ago and it's it's gone game busters ever since and each each improvement is literally way better and way faster than anything I could imagine so definitely check it out all right um any other questions feel free throw them in the chat unmute yourself and start asking but I have a question for you guys so Something that people often ask about is call reports. People are used to doing them a certain way. Can you talk about how um, you do call reports using Rive? Uh, I have my ops manager do it, so I can't say I know the step-by-step -step, um, of how it all is done, but I know that we use um, uh, strategic compliance to help with those and um, like the first couple times, you know, like anything, like just kind of learning like um, the process. But my ops manager has said doing it in Arrive versus how it was done with Calyx is like light years easier. And um, we've kind of come up with a system um, of how we prep for it and it's made it much cleaner. So um, like we, my ops manager kind of runs like a pre, um, a pre-report, I guess, um, like a couple weeks before the reports due, and then kind of just double checks with LOs of like, hey, you didn't have a status on this one. Like, can you just kind of clean these details up for me? And then she's got all the info. And then once that's all dialed in, it's like a couple clicks and it's easy and we can send off what we need. So I know that's not like super nitty gritty, but um, I know that she's way happier. And so that makes me happier. <laughs> Yeah, and we do them a little different. We we've always done them on Google Sheets. Um, I've got a my CEO is kind of a math savant, um, so we've we've been trying, and he's been pulling them through there and making them match. And that was one thing that we haven't kind of got rid of the Google Sheets yet. Just that's a little bit of a crutch on our end that we kind of like to have both going. Um, but from what I hear, they're clean and it, and it's easy, real easy to do. So um, especially as we expand and have more business in some of these states that are a little more complicated, like the Carolinas, um, you know, I think we're we're looking forward to leverage that and maybe sunset our Google Sheet at the end of the year. But um, yeah, from what I hear, it's good. Cool. All right, we have ten minutes left. We have a few minutes left. So if you have questions, now is the time to ask them. But I'm just going to do a fun one here. So Claire and Robert, what are your favorite features about Arrive? What do you find most useful? I love the I love the, the product comparison. Yeah, I'm a big fan of the two, two option close where you give them two options and they pick one of them. So being able to pull and run a couple scenarios and, and send it out in the quoting. Um, yeah, I'm a big I'm a big fan of that. Yeah, you know, I like having the dashboard there so I can see where my loans are spread out as a business owner. Um, you know, it's it when COVID struck a couple of years ago, we got, you know, we went from heavy with one lender to a true broker of at a bunch of multiple lenders. So I, I really I, I want to make sure we're not putting all my eggs in one basket as a business owner. So being able to see that spread and then the easy price outs for the LOs is awesome. Um, those are some of my favorite features. I mean, I'd say mine's pretty similar. I, I, I love the like quoting process, like that I can do it all in one place um, and that I can do side-by-side -side scenarios that it looks beautiful and professional and you can like even pick your, you know, company colors and stuff like that. Um, like it, you know, I'm, I'm little and I don't have some like 
robust marketing department, but it makes me look better. So I like that. Um, so yeah, I mean, the, just how easy and quick it is that I can crank those out in a matter of minutes and have like multiple scenarios. Um, that's, that's my favorite thing. Very nice. And a cool thing that we're, we're putting in and, and adding and we're constantly tweaking is, you know, some of those guided action communications, you know, we were real sensitive on, you know, sending those out at first without them being perfected, but I'd say put some time in there and really clean up those guided actions and customize those and, and uh, our ops team loves those now. All right. Well, I, well, I know there are a couple of people here on this call who aren't actually arrive users yet. They're just kind of getting their bearings and maybe trying to make a decision. What would you say to these folks, these people who are on the fence, not really sure if they want to use arrive or another system? What would you say to them? You guys been paying attention in the last hour? <laughs> Wake up, do it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I just think the, um, I mean, I guess like just how invested Harish is in catering his product to his target client is just so impressive to me. Like the fact that he wants boots on the ground and he wants to know, what do you love about it? What do you hate about it? What can we do better? And there's constantly improvements that are awesome. And like you, like when you ask for like, hey, I really would love it for to do this or that, like I love that you pull a credit report and someone's got student loans and you can click a little toggle thing and it does the math for you if it's a half percent of the balance or it's 1% of the balance when it's like in deferment and showing a zero payment. Like that just saves me so much time. Like that is just so smart. And like the fact that somebody could be like, hey, can we make a faster way? And they did it. Um, and I can just go like, you know, people's got like 27 student loans, like click, 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 boom, done. So just, I mean, jumping in now like you're investing in your future the future of your business because it's just going to keep getting better like quicker than any other platform yeah that's, that's a better favorite. that's a better answer than mine good job <laughs> but yeah harish is completely invested in the broker channel if you're going to be a true broker you got to give multiple options and this is just gives you the ability to do that so strongly recommend it yeah big fan and the price point is like i said we spent a lot of money on a Salesforce integration that didn't have this capability and didn't end up functioning for us. So price is right. Yeah. I have another question. Yeah. So in the, for the pricing, uh, when it gets to the point to select a lender, you guys typically just use one lender for your quote that maybe you just use most frequently. How do you go about choosing your lender for a, for a quote for a prospect? I usually pick three or four. Um, and then I have a couple lenders that aren't integrated that I regularly use. And so I'll pull them up, whether it's in their own pricing engine separately or on Loan Sifter. And then, you know, I, I have them manually entered as a manual, I think they call it a manual lender. And then I can tweak the pricing within that so I can still see it all in one screen. Um, Cause yeah, I mean, that's the beauty of being a broker. Like I don't want to yeah. only look at one person's price, one you know, lender's price sheet. So. Right. Um, and then when, when you, when you pull it into the comparable sheet, one column could be, you know, home point, the next column yeah. could be caliber or whoever, yep. but at the yep. end of the day, it's look, it looks branded to your company coming from, you know, with the ride. Yeah. Yeah, keep in mind you want to, you know, you're, you're going to pick lenders based on the customer profile. You know, we we get to make a, a custom quote for these customers and borrowers because, you know, your 620 FHA borrower in the same place as you're going to probably send that 780A paper borrower. You know, so it's all part of the whole, you know, the whole broker appeal is the fact that you get to pick where it goes. I can say we were number one or number two. Um, account for a cardinal in the entire country last year and our business has really gone down with them because they're not on the you know they're not on the arrive platform right now and i've told them i've, I've told them every time they call and ask what's going on i said well I, I, I warned you you know so um i'd say partner up and get you know get a good relationship with the aes of those 
lenders that price out and arrive and you know we, we've got a core four and then we got a lender matrix that everybody uses to kind of pick where we want to take a borrower that's internal uh, but build those relationships with those aes that are you know supporting your platform now which is arrived right. and, and that's that's where you're probably going to want to take your business you know like, yeah yeah <clears throat> it's it's just it, it's bound to happen if they make it hard to get them a quote out they're probably not going to use them so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay no, it's very helpful. I appreciate that. All right, folks. Well, we are coming up on time here. Robert and Claire, did we cover everything? Is there anything else? Wait, we got to a lot. I think we did. Yeah, we did. We did good. Yeah, I think it was fun. I'm glad y'all. Uh, thanks for inviting me. Yeah. Thank you both for being here. You have no idea how valuable this is not only for us um, at Arrive, but for our users, for people who are new to the system, for people who are thinking of using the system. This is just incredibly valuable, and we really appreciate you taking an hour out of your very busy schedule to do this. So thank you both so, so much. We appreciate you being here. The future is bright for Arrive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Love it. So catch us back here live for another Broker Connect session. That'll happen in two weeks. We'll have another pair of awesome guests. They'll wait. They'll be waiting here to share all of their knowledge, their tips, their insights, everything. So thank you for tuning in, everyone. Thank See you. Ya. Thank you. Bye, guys.